Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, there's a car coming. If you can hear any slurping in the background. I've got 40 litres of highly explosive aviation gasoline in the boot. All properly tanked up I might add, but... How are you? All right? I bought a new computer for work. And it's not arriving for a while. But I think uh, when I get the computer in at work, it's going to be uh, very quick to upload these videos. So there's going to be a massive amount of them arriving on the market at the same time. I just don't have the energy to do them in the evenings at the moment. Let's just get that back screen cleaned. That's it. Yeah, so, how's it going, slaving over a hot gob? I thought I'd uh, tell you about a patient of mine. Another one we chucked out. I recommend that you divest yourself of any patients that are causing trouble. And I don't mean like physically assaulting the receptionist staff, I mean, although that would be included, obviously. I mean, I'll explain the sort of trouble I mean. We had, we had a chap in, and he was obviously, immediately he came in, he obviously, you know, st still stereotypically an eccentric sort of bloke. He'd, um, we'd had a bit of correspondence with him, He'd rung up, he wanted to know if we did, uh, how much we charge for dentures, and uh, we told him, and he said, he, well, he didn't really want a proper set, he just wanted a cheap, a cheap spare set, and, uh, and also he wanted his existing full upper relined, and could I do him like a special deal, which included a cheap spare upper set, and a reline all for a very, very good price. So we of course said, right, pause now, if you want to think about what we said. Did you pause? We said, no, <laughs> we're not in the business of providing cheap spare sets. And uh, unfortunately we couldn't help him. So then anyway, we didn't hear anything else from him for a while. And then he decided that he was going to get himself booked in. Rattling in the background. I'm gonna to have to get a better car. I tell you, this thing is like is like the bloody Beverly Hillbillies car. So it doesn't help the roads aren't all that brilliant either. So anyway, then then he then booked himself in and said, you know, he was going. To, and thanks to our system of uh, paying in advance. He was charged about 1,350 quid or something, which was the cost of a new full upper, full lower, uh, and a reline on his existing full upper. Uh, he's, he's existing full lower, he's, he's happy with. So, when he came in, uh, we always ask if we can take a quick, like, thumbnail picture of people, uh, because, it helps us recall quickly who that person is and what we're doing for them rather than going through the notes. So for example, if uh, someone says to me, oh, Mr. Smith is coming in tomorrow, if I can have a quick look and, and just look at Mr. Smith, then I'll remember him. Uh, a lot of useful information. It's like uh, what Ayn Rand would say, distill the, the essence of somebody out quickly and the picture is a good a memoir in doing that. So, and he refused, he, he just refused. And, uh, which is not a problem. I said to him, he got every right not to have a picture taken if he doesn't want a picture taken. And he said that he didn't want it because, you know, what with the internet and everything, he's worried about it ending up on Facebook. So 
that I said to him, I reminded him that all his data is covered by data protection and that uh, his picture is given the same status as his notes and his notes are not likely to end up on Facebook. So, uh, but he still said no because I think it sort of took him by surprise, you know. Nobody had ever asked to take a picture of him before for medical treatment and uh, and therefore his immediate reaction was to say no because it's easier to change a no to a yes than it is a yes to a no, which is, you know, fair enough. So anyway, but, but it is unusual enough to be a flag, you know. It just flags someone up as behaving, uh, uh, what's the word? as an outlier he's just an outlier in that respect yeah no judgment about him for it but just an outlier in that respect and then also an outlier in that he's obviously you know decided to try and finagle the fee down and then cancel his appointment and then and has now rebooked it and well, probably because he's found out that no one else will even see him and then I mean this was followed by red flag after red flag uh, his upper denture was very loose, very unretentive, and obviously only held up by his lower lip and his tongue. And uh, and yet he insisted that it was it was a brilliant denture, and uh, uh, you know, but it was the lower one that was a bit worn down. And then he started making references to the fact that his lower denture had been. Uh, a bit too long in places, but he, but it was all right after he sort of reduced it uh, in in length slightly, and then uh, I said that if he wanted a retentive denture, then it would need to be extended further posteriorly um, and have a proper post dam on it. And he said, oh, he was, he was pleased that uh, I suggested that because he felt that the uh, the denture fell down at the front as a result of the uh, loss of the bracing action, uh, the posterior extension. So in other words, he sort of treated it like a seesaw, where he said, you know, when the seesaw, the fulcrum is the middle of his palate, and the front denture was falling down, and the back of the seesaw had been cut off, so therefore uh, the seesaw was able to come down. So the, the problem was that we were sort of able to agree on objectives and outcomes but not agree on at all on method it was quite quite uh, obvious that he developed his own uh, schema for dentures and how they worked and what was necessary and what was good and bad in terms of their construction and uh, you see this sometimes in uh, denture patients who uh, keep coming back for adjustments but they're not at all interested in what you think uh, as regards what needs to be adjusted they come back because they want you to take a bit more off here or they want you to uh, smooth a bit more off here and they've worked out that everything will be fine if only uh, you could just do this one small thing and um, of course a lot of the small things that they ask for, you know from your experience, are very completely unproductive and uh, ineffective, or perhaps even counterproductive, you know. Um, but the, the promise, there's always the promise and the, and the very firm assurance by the patient that if you were just to agree with them, and do this one thing, this one small thing, which is not too much to ask, then they'll go away and never come back, which they do until next week when they come back and say, yes, the adjustment you did last time was fine, obviously because they suggested it, And uh, but however, the problem is still there and uh, they've been thinking about it and they, uh, they think now that it's this other small thing that's, that's causing all the trouble. And you can't go down that route, you know. You shouldn't ever get to that point. You should not uh, arrive at a situation where the, the 
the patient is in charge of the treatment and is micromanaging the construction of the dentures and you are, you know, you, you are reduced to the status of someone who is simply uh, adjusting the denture for them free of charge and, and will eventually refund all their money when it's completely knackered and useless. So, and the problem is that they use the same techniques when you're making the denture. And that's what this bloke was using on me. And I could recognize it, I recognize it because I've been in practice 40 years and I've seen quite a few of these people and, and you have to recognize the warning signs. And the warning signs are, like for example, one, one big flashing sign was, you know, I said to him, uh, you know, we'll, we'll judging, I, I said I think there's a gap between your expectations and the, uh, uh, what is achievable, you know, because you always try and depress their expectations and, and so that you can exceed them. Um, and also there's like a complete dismissal of any suggestion that you might have which might work. Like for example, I said to him, you know, obviously retention is a big issue with you on these upper and lower dentures. And I said the conventional advice now for people who've got unretentive full dentures is to have some sort of implant supported uh, retention, you know, to have either mini implant where the denture's clipped on or a, a maxi implant where the, uh, the denture's on through magnets, which we've done in the past, or uh, just literally screwed on superstructure. And, and that is met with an immediate, oh no, no, oh no, no, you know, like, oh no, no. <laughs> you know, I don't want you to do something that works. I want you to try and, try and persist with something that's usually a lot cheaper, that has got a much, much less chance of success. You know, and I don't want to, I don't want to hear any more about those implants that would work. You know, oh no, no. So, I said to him, I, I said, my, my problem is this. You know, you've paid I, 1,250 quid for these dentures. And I said, if you, uh, right at the end of it, you say, uh, you can't wear them, then uh, you'll, you will feel that you're entitled to your money back. Because you'll have had a set of dentures made, expensive set of dentures made, and they'll go straight in the drawer. He said, look, he said, no, no, I understand where you're coming from. He said, but I would just like to tell you that I'm not, to the extent that I have paid 1,250 quid, that money is written off and I don't expect that money back. He said, all I want to do is work with you, you know, and obviously you being a good dentist, uh, to, to get me a set of dentures that's going to be really an excellent set of dentures. So there's a sort of a, there's a, sort of a mix of uh, flattery that, you know, I'm sure you'll be able to come good to my satisfaction, whatever that is, you know, I'll let you know later whether you've, you've, you've hurdled that bar. And, uh, uh, and, and a sort of a minimizing of, um, a minimizing of the prospects of him uh, complaining, you know. So I'm, I'm very reasonable, providing you do you know half a good job then there, there won't be you won't have any trouble for me it's like the patient you know who used to leave and say uh, I've forgotten my wallet but don't worry I'll, I'll make sure you get your money you won't have any trouble getting the money from me you know I'm good for it you know and you knew that you knew those patients would never pay they'd never paid those patients the ones that said you won't have any trouble they what they were basically they were just having a, a laugh at you because they, they had no intention of paying they just wanted to have a laugh and and just wonder uh, how gullible you were. <laughs> so uh, you know, and, and enjoy the fact that they'd done it to you as they'd done it to a load of other suppliers. So you know, and this is tremendously reassuring. And I think this is why dentists do finish dentures for patients and then and then get themselves into the situation where they're desperate to get the patient out of the surgery and get the patient happy. Um, and there are, 
you know, the only way I've found of doing it is just to adjust the denture, uh, you know, providing it's reasonable, um, and then call the patient's bluff and say, well, look, you know, I've done the last four adjustments you've asked me to, and it's still not happy, you know, perhaps the problem is you. And eventually the patient will stop coming back because there is some cost to them for taking time out of their life, paying for taxes, whatever, getting to the surgery. Uh, whereas you're, you're just sitting there all the time, you know what I mean? They have to come to you. So um, eventually they, they will stop. Um, and then hopefully they'll stop and won't then uh, allege that you did, did a negligent job in making the denture. But anyway, the fact that he was having a reline was, was great from my point of view because it gave me a chance to see whether or not he was um, uh, capable of being successfully treated with something as simple as a reline. And so, of course, I did a rubber-based reline of his upper denture. He, he got a uh, unrepaired cleft, but pretty pretty well closed. And um, did a rubber-based reline of his of his upper denture, and then um, that was on a Friday, I thought. And then yesterday was Monday, and I thought I'll give him a ring and see how he's getting on with it, you know. And <clears throat> I've got to be honest with you. I knew, I knew that that would be the optimum time to catch him at a point when he said it's rubbish. Because when, when we fitted the reline, he put it in and it immediately dropped down like his old one had. And ignoring the fact that it had taken him 15 years to be that competent, you wanna go, you wanna go, it had taken him 15 years to become that competent. I'm not saying it took him all of those 15 years to learn to chew with it, but I'm just saying he had 15 years worth of history and experience with his, his denture, and he didn't give it 15 seconds, the new one. Uh, he just said, no, no, it's loose. And I, okay, I mean, pretty much the, the deal was done at that point. Um, And uh, basically, he he, <laughs> he he tipped his head back and he opened his mouth for about 60 seconds and then the denture just fell down. And I said to him, look, we, we've got to get this clear. I said, you asked me to reline your dentures. I said, I've relined them. They're a better fit. I said, they fit better now than they did. I said, they, I have not improved the suction on them, the retention. I said, reline in a denture makes it fit better. I said, it doesn't make it stay up better. It's got design flaws with it. It's not properly extended. It doesn't. Uh, the, the post dam is too far forward, and and not to mention the fact you've got a bloody great unrepaired cleft there, uh, siphoning air in from your nose. So, you know. So that was basically my my story to him was just. You've had a reline done, and I think it's a good reline, and. And that's your reline, and now sort of take it away and get used to it, if, if you can. Well, obviously by the, the Monday he'd had two or three days to, uh, to get used to it. And he was of the opinion, I think when I rang him, he was, he was a bit surprised that I rang him. And he was, of, he was of the opinion initially, he was about to say to me, actually, yeah, uh, it's not too bad I'm getting on with it a bit better now I've had it in a couple of days etc etc but then he, he he stopped himself and he went back into this old routine that he had done when the, the you know the um, the, the uh, denture was no different and if it was different it was worse and um, that basically uh, it had had no chance of succeeding right from the start because I'd used the wrong material. And he knew that because he'd uh, been having impressions done of his teeth for 50 years, and he knew what the right material was, and he noticed that I had used the wrong material. And I said to him, why didn't you tell me at the time? And he said, well, I, I didn't feel like I was in a position to complain at the time. And when I said, well, that's a shame, because you know, you, it's a shame you didn't bring up this issue at the time. 
we could have dealt with it. Um, and um, he pointed out that I, I, I must have used the wrong material because I used a different material for the actual denture. Because what I'd done obviously is use rubber base for the reline and alginate, a uh, bright yellow alginate for the denture. And, uh, for, for, and uh, you know, we were going to get special trays made on those impressions and, and I would have used rubber base for his, um, for his second impressions. But of course, I, I, I was not going to explain that to him. I was not going to explain that to him. There's no point, you know, there's a bloke who thinks he knows everything, he absolutely knows nothing, and I'm not going to explain it to him. Uh, because I know where this is going now, you know. I mean, it's bad enough him saying that... Uh, oh, and then, and then he said that actually the, the denture actually um, uh, is, is tolerable now because he's uh, spent a lot of time over the weekend with sandpaper setting it right, you know. So I'm like, okay. I, I said... Uh, now, now, the thing was, right, and this is the thing, and if there's one thing I want you to get from the story is this. He then said to me, uh, but... but don't worry about that. Uh, I want to get cracking on with these full falls, these new full falls, as soon as possible. Uh, you know, uh, don't don't let's not uh, let's not dwell on the fact that the reline's uh, been a disaster. I want you to make me my full falls um, pronto. And I'm like that, and that is a weird thing, isn't it? I mean, let's suppose. <laughs> Supposing you hire a builder to build uh, to build your sauna or a garden shed or something, and he he, he makes a right roll cock up of it. Go on, I don't know what you're doing, but you're welcome. Yeah, so so you buy you, you sort of you cut your builder and he mucks something up really badly. And you say, well, you know, that was terrible. That shed you put up was really terrible. And I've spent, I'd spend the afternoon, I had to spend the weekend fixing it and making it right. And even now it's, it's rubbish. But I want you to crack on with making me a new extension on the house. As soon as you can, you know. So, so you'd be like, what? <laughs> And that's this, this sort of dissonance that you get in these people. This, this sort of thought that, you know, uh, okay, I'm not, I'm not at all happy with it, but I'm sure I'm just one, I am just one tiny tweak away from it being perfect. And of course they're not, because they're not, you know, the, the, the way their brain works, it's not, uh, it works in a weird way, you know. They're not, they can't judge, they've got no uh, trust in other people's skill. They won't, he pitted his 50 years worth of having impressions taken, and I, I don't believe it's 50 years anyway, but, but he said 50 because I said I'd been in practice 40 years, and that, you know, oh, that was the other thing. He said that, um, you know, he was concerned that I'd rung him to ask him how the reline had gone, because um, that obviously indicated I had no confidence in, in the work and that I was worried and concerned that I'd basically fucked it up. And so I was, you know, wanted to, you know, find out um, how badly he was suffering as a result of my negligence, basically. <laughs> so, so there you go, you know. If you go to a lecture and someone says it's nice to, uh, you know, if you, if a patient has a difficult extraction, send him a bunch of flowers or something. Uh, fucking don't do it, man. <laughs> don't do it. You can't. You're caught between a rock and a hard place. You're caught between this that woman who had a wisdom tooth out and never contacted me and I never contacted her and ended up in front of Ashley Lupin's service committee. Oh, and, uh, and people like him who I ring up and say, like, how's it going? And he's like, well, none, none of my previous dentists have ever rung me up to ask me how it's going. They obviously had confidence in their work. You obviously don't have any confidence in your work. <laughs> so, so I said to him, 
you know, I, I said after 40 years, I think I, I do, I probably do know, you know, half of that at least as a private dentist, 30 years of that as a private dentist, probably, I probably do have a good idea of, of how good a dentist I am. And, uh, and he then decided to trump my 40 years with 50 years of having impressions taken. And therefore, as a result, he was probably more of an expert on having the impressions that have been taken of his mouth than I, than I was, as, a, as obviously as a relative newcomer. And therefore, if I'd only listened to him, if only he'd only said anything, then uh, everything would have been all right. But never mind, but don't worry. Let's, you know, I'm sure everything will be fine. And uh, let's, just, uh, let's just carry on as though nothing has happened. So, so of which the, the answer was, of course, uh, uh, no. <laughs> no, I told him that trust was an essential part of any patient-physician relationship. And, uh, you know, it's clear to me that he doesn't trust our judgment. Either he doesn't uh, uh, trust in the quality of our work or our methods even, you know, in, in by, by alleging that we'd used the wrong impression material. So, um, and I couldn't, uh, I, I, in all good conscience, I couldn't continue on, on that basis. You know, or I felt that it was bad for him to continue on that basis. And that uh, that we'd be refunding his money, not for the reline, uh, not least because he had the Dremel on it, so he's lost that. But um, basically, uh, for the denture, which is twelve hundred and fifty quid, and you know, I think I think I heard his jaw hit the floor when I said to him, "I'm going to refund the money for the denture," because I really honestly thought that he thought that everything was fine and with a little goodwill on both sides and a few adjustments uh, according to his uh, recipe for making dentures uh, I would have been pleased to have continued he honestly really thought I was like you know um, and what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uh, photos of the impressions we took um, just to show that they were of a, of a, of a of a high quality uh, this for the denture and um, file them with these notes and then yes yeah, so goodbye and I think we've already done the refund and it's things to refund 1250 quid especially when it's already in your bank so but you know what's the alternative I think the alternative would would have been to have uh, made the denture and got a lot of stress and then refunded the 1250 quid you know so I think I've dodged the bullet there and uh, I'll let him go and let him go and get his dentures made somewhere else somewhere where uh, you know I, I don't know whether he'll be happy anywhere else perhaps he will perhaps he'll, he'll usually what happens is these patients go to the next dentist and the next dentist they say is the dog's bollocks they say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever you're doing, uh, you know, it's different from Mr. Watson. I'm sure you're doing it all really well. He didn't do it at full well, you know. You know. But, you know, fair enough. You, you win some and you lose some. And we, we get rid of some as well. Okay, nice to talk to you. Bye.